Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of All About Bridge Engineering. In today's episode, we will see the various types of traffic barriers as mentioned in IRC5 and we will try to bridge the gaps between the guidelines related to all the three categories of crash barriers and how these crash barriers are applied in reality in highways and bridges around us. So clause number 109.6 of IRC5 talks a lot about crash barriers and in this clause there is a further sub clause which talks about the three basic types of crash barriers. So the three basic types are flexible barrier, semi-rigid barrier and rigid barrier and in this episode one by one we will be discussing all these three barriers and see their practical applications as well. So let us start with the first type which is the flexible barrier. On your screen there is a particular example of a flexible barrier. Flexible barriers are composed of wire or cables which, has, which are suspended on vertical posts and they are properly anchored at the ends. The cylindrical elements of the cables that you are seeing here are known as tension based and during the event of collision of a vehicle with such type of barriers the impact energy is absorbed by these barriers in the form of excessive yielding of the wires or cables. Now let's have a look at the anchor bracket where all the four wires are actually embedded and they are properly tensioned. So this anchor bracket is present on both sides. So definitely we'll be seeing the other side as well in time to come. Now this crash barrier is the least effective because it can only prevent the vehicle to go on the other side and take a part of the impact energy. Let's discuss about the second type which is the semi-rigid barrier. You can see a very beautiful cross section of a semi-rigid barrier. This longitudinal beam is equivalent to the English alphabet W and hence they are also known as W beam barriers. So in this if we see the plan we have a post channel, the leftmost part, a middle part known as the spacer channel and definitely then the longitudinal guard rail beam which is of this cross section of W. So these barriers are more effective than the previous category of flexible barriers. And whenever a vehicle hits such barriers, the impact energy is absorbed by these barriers by excessive deformation of this horizontal longitudinal W beam. So in places where the risk or hazard is high, we can have a further subcategory of these barriers by providing two W beams. So on your screens, we have a clear comparison of single W beam and a double W beam. The rightmost image on the bottom right side is the double W beam and these are taken from IRC5. So we can see that the left side actual crash barrier is in correlation with the images that we just saw. Now it's time to discuss about the third category which is the rigid barrier. Rigid barrier is the most effective crash barrier as it is composed of reinforced cement concrete and let's have a look at its cross section first and try to correlate it with the figure that is mentioned in IRC5. You can see the rightmost image IRC5 has a total height of 1.1 meters and also note that in this very bridge the crash, barriers, the crash barrier is present at the outermost edge as there is no footpath. So whenever the crash barrier is present at the outermost edge, its height has to be minimum 1.1 meters as per IRC 5. Also note that the bottom of this crash barrier has some angle. This helps to guide the vehicles back on the carriageway whenever they try to hit or collide with such a crash barrier. And hence they can be prevented from falling below the bridge or on the ground at the lower levels. So in this episode, we are only focusing on the types of crash barriers, but there is a whole science behind the design of each of these crash barriers or each of these traffic barriers. If you want me to make a dedicated episode on the design aspects, let me know in the comment section and definitely I will bring more details of the design aspects of each of these crash barriers. Now we will walk on the road and see various locations where such crash barriers are present. But before that, let's have a clear look at the anchor bracket and how all these wires are actually tensioned at the ends in the case of a flexible barrier and please note that these barriers are the least effective you can see on each side left and right we had same cross sections so now let's walk on the road and see where we can find the flexible barriers so let's stop here and you can see that right side we have an anchor bracket and also you can see how they are anchored on the ground So now it's time we should go ahead you can see on the right side embankment is there the height of the embankment is not very high maybe it is less than two meters and we have full flexible barriers you can also see the elevation of flexible barriers here and now we are approaching one bridge in this bridge please note whenever the flexible barrier will 
and still we will have a rigid crash barrier that means that on the bridge flexible barriers are not permanent let's have a closer look at this so please note that the flexible barrier is terminated just before the bridge begins and at the bridge we have a rigid crash barrier now let's proceed again and see what types of barriers we have so coming now on the left side is a semi rigid barrier which we are able to see now this is a single double w beam barrier and let's have a closer look at the end how it is anchored into the ground so you can see it is actually directioned into the ground at the ends so we have seen the application of flexible barriers as well as the semi rigid barriers now let's go to the cross section where we will have a footpath also and see the differences in crash barrier heights on either side so meanwhile we reach at the bridge have a look at the images on your top on the screen the left image corresponds to a case when crash barrier is present with footpath you can see in this very bridge the left crash barrier is not at the outermost edge but it is also having a footpath so here the height will be 900 but on the right side the crash barrier has a height of 1.1 meters as per irc5 and again when the bridge is over we saw a semi rigid barrier on the left hand side on the approaches so this is the image or this is the clip taken from the same highway but at a different time and you can see semi rigid barrier application here as well and now we are approaching a curved bridge in plan and let us see what are the type of traffic barriers or what is the arrangement of traffic barriers so we are on the approach and you can see semi rigid barrier already on the left screen and whenever the bridge is about to start we have rigid barriers which means that on bridges we have to have a rigid barrier and we cannot provide either semi rigid or flexible barriers so now this is another final clip where we are having the practical applications of flexible barriers on left and the right you can see on the right side we have an embankment over which flexible barriers are provided and also on the left side we also have flexible barriers which are differentiating the shoulder lane to the main carriageway so this episode was only and only directed to provide you an indication of the type of traffic barriers that we have on our highways as per as indian roads are concerned there is a dedicated code for traffic barriers which you are seeing on your screens if you want to gain some more knowledge about this let me know in the comment section we will bring a dedicated episode focused only and only on the design aspects of traffic barriers so thank you for watching till end and stay tuned for more such updates subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet because we talk a lot about engineering related to bridges around us